Okay, so we're recording. This is EE3050 uh, Dynamic Systems. Okay, so week one, lecture two. So what I'll do, so my name is Bart, and I'm the instructor for the course. So I wasn't out of town yesterday. I came back only late last night. It was fine. So today we'll just look at a short overview of the course, and that's about it uh, for today. So today's lecture should be pretty short. Now something important: my server is down. Right? It's so when I was out of country, apparently there was a freak thunderstorm, and my, the power supply to my server fried. So bottom line is, I sent you an email in the morning. Did you all get it with the syllabus? Okay. So if you're not getting my emails, just uh, you need to let me know ASAP. Right, because that's where that's how I'll send. Basically, it's the syllabus. The that's what you need. Okay, because there's no lab for this course. Number one. Number two. All the homework problems are end of each chapter problems. They're already specified in the syllabus. Okay. The lecture videos. I should get my server up and running. Basically, I have to buy a new server. That's fine. Uh, by next week. But for now, I also sent you an e in the email. I sent you a link to my YouTube channel. Did you get that? Yeah. So by the end of today, this lecture should be up on my YouTube channel. Okay. The PDF of this, I'll email it to you if you want it. Okay. So basically, that's what I'll do. I'll record all my lectures. So this course, what is this course about? This course is basically about how to set up mathematical models for control systems. Okay. That's basically what it is. Hey, Scott, can you see? All right. so let me know if you want me to write bigger. Yeah. And I will. So all of you have taken 2070, yes? No? So you have done Laplace transform analysis of circuits? Yeah, so this course basically takes the Laplace transform and applies it to different systems, different quote unquote like mechanical systems. But you'll see underlying they're all modeled by the same differential equation, right? So for example, the mass spring damper. Uh, so what do you mean by mathematical model? Let's look at a physical system, and then let's look at the corresponding mathematical model. So let's say I have, let's start with our LCR circuit. Okay. So let's say this is VC and this is IL. Okay. The voltage, let me draw this a little bigger. All right. So let's LC. R, okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is let's look at a more, I guess, in, well, it's not really, I don't want to say more intuitive, but let's look at a mechanical model. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down here. So, let's look at a mechanical system, mass spring damper. Okay. So, whoops. Here is a spring. Here is a damper. This is spring constant K. This is damping coefficient dV. Here is a mass M. Okay. And here is the displacement X. Okay. So what is the mathematical model that describes this system? We'll talk about this shortly. Okay. But let's look at this guy. So let's say I tell you that um, I give you some initial conditions. That is, x at t equals 0 is 0, but x dot at 0, the velocity is alpha. Right? Just some initial conditions. So what is the mathematical model? There are many ways to write the mathematical model for this. This is dv. I think this is the notation your book uses. What's the mathematical model for this? 
huh no not kx squared so what so let me ask you this uh, what kind of equation uh does it what kind of equation do you write mathematically to describe the system what kind of, huh what kind of an equation sorry differential equation yes so some of the four so what law do you use to write so what law do you use to write the differential equation that describes the system Newton's second law, right? So what's Newton's second law? So Newton's second law. Second law is what? Sum of the forces is what? Mass times acceleration, yes. So, or in other words, okay, in this case, what we have is we not only have MA, whoops, but we also have what? DV times velocity plus K times X, all right? There are no external forces acting on the system. So, this is zero, yes? This is M D squared X DT squared plus DV DX DT plus KX. Yes, and then you have the corresponding initial conditions over here. Just do something out. So that's the mathematical model that describes the system. In other words, whatever external force you apply, okay, these forces oppose it. Okay, so if I pull this to the right, the mass opposes it. So does the spring. So does the damper. Is that clear? So that's why if this is the external force and it's positive to the right, then all of these would be negative, which makes sense, right? So the sign is very important. Is that clear? So a differential equation is one way to describe this system. Now what we will do is we can take the Laplace transform of this equation and get a model in the free, in the S domain, in the Laplace domain, we'll do that later. Okay, and there are advantages to doing that. All right, so now let's look at this guy. In the sense, I want to focus on this electric circuit because hopefully you're familiar with this circuit, right? That is, you should be able to tell me what is the differential equation that describes this system. Okay. But before that, before we get started, I mean, the syllabus itself, there is nothing really much to go through. Uh, except if you look at, so let me just go through this. Let me take a little break and just go through this. So what we will do first is we will look at Laplace transforms, right? And this should hopefully be a review of 2017. Go through it anyway. You all covered Laplace transforms, partial fraction expansion. Yes, inverse Laplace in 2017, right? Or the equivalent. So we'll, that's pretty much what the next two lectures are. Then the electric network transfer function is also a review of 2017, okay? go through it but after that we'll get into what you have hopefully seen if, in physics if you haven't seen it it should be pretty obvious as to how to set up the differential equation describing the system you just have to practice and be careful with the sign inside gn right so we'll look at tr uh, translational mechanical systems like this one but many degrees of freedom you'll have masses connected to each other where springs dampeners okay it's not hard as long as you're careful but you will see, as we will see from this example, that the underlying mathematical model, either differential equation or even the Laplace domain expression are all equivalent. Right? That's what makes mathematical models so powerful. In the underlying physical system, you can have different, you can have different mathematical models that are the same mathematical model are described by different physical systems. Very powerful abstraction. So look at, oops, translational mechanical systems then we'll look at rotational mechanical systems and then there will be your first exam okay. after that we'll look at gears 
Then we'll look at an electromechanical system that is a DC servo motor. So this one will basically combine all the things you learned from weeks one through five, if you will, through the first lecture in week five. But the point is this course still builds up, okay? After this, we will look at, well, we'll look at nonlinear systems a little bit and feedback systems. Then we'll look in uh, another way to represent mathematically these systems. There is a state space terminology or modern control theory. Then we'll look at how to move between state space and transfer functions, and that's about it, okay? So this course is all about mathematical modeling, and the 30, 3720 builds up on what you learned here. They all build up. And then, of course, there is the usual grading, okay? And the way I do the grading is, I take, look at the final exam, if it's the highest, middle, or lowest, I appropriately weight it, okay? So if it's the highest among all your... Uh, you have two exams. You should have two exams. I'll fix it. Yeah, you have two exams. So there you score the highest on the final. That will be weighted the most. 40%. Okay. And then the homework is standard 10%. Uh, highest midterm, then lowest midterm. Okay. And so on and so forth. Is that clear? And I don't curve the class. Okay. So if everybody gets an A, I'll give everybody an A. But about the homework, the homeworks are due at the beginning of class. So there aren't a lot of problems because these are, the. it's up to you to practice these problems. Right? The more you practice, the better you will get at it. And depending on your math skill, it may or may not be easy. Okay? It just depends on how good your math is. If your math is pretty poor, this class will be insanely difficult. Right? But this is actually the easiest of the two classes. And you can improve it, right? Just Practice more. So that's what it is. Like, just look, again, like I keep emphasizing, looking at me do the problems is not enough. Right? I don't, only I become better at it. So, anyway, let's get into like uh, the different actually ways of representing the system. So, can you tell me what is the differential? So, here is the differential equation describing the system. Yes. What is the differential equation describing the system? But before that, you use Newton's second law or mechanics to write the differential equation here. Yes. So what law, laws do you use to write the equations describing this system? Well, uh, Ohm's law is one. But the equivalent, yes, the equivalent of Newton's second law for circuits is not really Ohm's law. It's like Ohm's law is equivalent to this. Okay? This is called Hooke's law. Yes? But the equivalent to Newton's second law is what? Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, that's what you use to write the differential equations describing the system. So let's start. So what do you want to use first? I mean, KCL is very trivial, right? It's a series circuit. So the current in all the branches is the same. Yes? So let's write Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let's use KVL. So KCL is trivial because it's a series circuit. Yes, current in implies current uh, in all branches is equal oops, to IL, right? the way I've specified it. It's just IL. So let's use KVL now, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So what happens? Like, tell me... Um, so get started with KVL. So what do you? What's the first thing you do for KVL? Set yeah, that's right. But set what equal to zero? Some of the voltages equal to zero. That's correct. But then, how many voltages do you have here? How many total? Three. How many of them are labeled? So label the others. So, so how do you want to label this guy? The voltage across the inductor. So like that. Good. All right. And this one, something like this. VR. Yes. So given this, tell me what KVL is. Give me one expression for KVL. So let's say you start at this point and you go around the loop in the direction of IL. You don't have to go in the direction of IL, but just pick one. Right? So 
I'm going counterclockwise. So what is KVL given the fact that we start at this point and we go counterclockwise? So what's the KVL expression? Tell me the exact expression. Come on, this is not even 2070, this is like 2050. So what is, what's the KVL expression? That, no, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's not jump here, that's correct, but I just want to tell, I just want you to tell me in terms of the voltages. Okay, that's fine. So uh, VL minus VR equals VC. So is that right? It's equal to negative VC, okay, but that's why I said, I mean, that's correct, right? But what I actually asked you was start at this point and go around counterclockwise. So let's do that. So what will happen? As I start here and I go like this. What's the voltage expression? What's the first voltage you come across? And how do I write it? Oops. VR, yes. Then what? Minus VC. There's a drop in VC. Okay, whoops. If you want, plus VR. Okay, if you want to be more specific. So start at this point, going counterclockwise, rise in VR, drop in VC, and then what? Drop in VL equals zero. Is that clear? And of course, as was corrected, you will get VL minus VR equals negative VC. Yes? There are many ways to write the correct KVL expression. I just wanted you to do it one way, that is starting at this point and going counterclockwise. You don't have to, as long as you get the signs right. So is this clear? It's not like uh, Latin and Greek, right? It shouldn't be. Yeah. So then, hold on, let me turn this off. Is this... Yes. All right. Okay. Now, like so, I was correctly pointed out. Uh, let's rewrite. So this is the equivalent of Ohm's law. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write. Uh, using elemental or element IV current voltage or voltage current relationships. What's your name? Sorry. Like Jacob said, he said LDIDT. So let's be sure that we get the signs right and the expression right. So let's start rewriting this equation because right now we can't solve this equation, right? In the sense, we want to, what do we, what do we want? We want a mathematical model describing the system okay this has this equation has three voltages unlike this differential equation which has only one unknown variable which is the position yes so we need to do something like that here so like jacob correctly suggested let's try to rewrite this in terms of currents if you will so what will happen So Jacob said DIL DT. So what, what, where does that go? So help Jacob out. So can I write DIL DT like properly in this equation? So okay, let me ask you this. Element IV relationships. So let's do a little column here. So I, V, okay, let me ask you this. Let's see if you really understand this. So what is the law that describes the IV relationship for a linear resistor? What is it called? We just talked about it. Ohm's law. So now, what's the Ohm's law expression according to the passive sign convention, given this picture. That's right, V equals minus IR. Yes, because current is leaving the positive direction of the voltage drop we chose, so the negative sign is there. Is that clear? That's good. All right, so now let's look at the capacity, the inductor 
like you probably know. So what is the IV relationship here? For the inductor. So V equals L di dt. And finally, we have the capacitor. I'll just write it here. So C i plus or minus V. So what's this? So what's the relationship for a capacitor? Well, I can even write it down here. down here, but no, I'll just leave it up there. Sorry? No, you're right the first time. So what is it? What is it for a capacitor? So dV dt equals what? I, I'm, I'm missing something there. So let me write it over here. Let me make it a little bigger. So here's the little capacitor, our friend. I plus or minus V. So what's the IV relationship? I equals dV dt, but does not dimensionally complete. So what's missing? So fix this. Sorry? So where's the C go? It can go in two places. Huh? Yeah, multiply by multiply dV dt C or I over C equals dV dt. Right. So these are the elemental IV relations we're probably going to use in this equation up here. Okay? So somehow we have to use all this. So let me um, okay, let's see. I can actually squeeze it in here. I don't have to squeeze it, I can write it in here. All right. So let's go. So now let's start with what Jacob suggested. So what is VL? What can I write instead of VL? Let me do step by step. VR minus VC minus what? L D I L D T. So let's be careful of the sign. First of all, it's I L and not I because, well, I called this current I L. Right? And I L is flowing counterclockwise, entering the positive direction of the voltage drop we chose. So the sign is positive. The negative sign comes because of KVL. So this looks good. All right? So as you write stuff, just think. Right? Don't blindly write it. All right. Let's look at VR. So what's VR? Can I write VR in terms of I L? Huh? So one suggestion was R times I L. Now is that correct? So looking at this picture and looking at this expression, is that correct? So it's minus, right? Why is it minus? I mean, accidentally I wrote it here. But if you look at this picture here, the current is going out of the positive direction of the voltage drop we chose. So this is negative. Is that clear? Very important. So let me... Okay, so let's leave VC out for now, and then let's do a minus L D I L D T equals zero. Okay. All right. Now, what do we do with VC? So let me do this. Let me copy this thing. How much time do we got? Plenty of time. So here it is, okay, and here is the equation we came up with. Now we have minus ILR minus VC minus L D I L D T equals zero. Okay, that's good, but we still have VC. It's like a kind of little pain, all right. And that's point number one. Point number two, I don't want to write this as an integral differential equation. I don't want to have integrals in this. I could based on this expression here, replace VC with an integral, yes, in terms of IL, I don't want that. I just want an equation very similar to this because point number one, it can be done. Point number two, you will see that it's basically, it's, it's beautiful, right? it's math. This is equation mathematically is the same thing as this, except the physical models are different. That's the beauty of math, right? it's very powerful. All right, so having said that, 
if I try to write VC in terms of I, I have to write V is integral of I, correct? Integral of IL, but I don't want to do that. So, so what do I do? How do I write this as a differential? Just leave it as a differential equation. Take the derivative on both sides, okay? Uh, knowing that R is a constant. So what happens if I take the derivative on both sides with respect to time? What do I get? So what's the derivative of this expression with respect to time? Zero? Only R is a constant. What's the derivative of this expression with respect to time? It's minus, okay, let me be even a little bit more clear. These are all function, I mean, IL is a function of time, yes, that's implied. VC is a function of time. Minus, this is also a function of time, yes? So having said that, what's the derivative of this expression? R what? Minus R times what? DIL DT, yes? That's the derivative of that function. What about this guy? Minus DVC DT, yes? Minus L D squared IL over DT squared equals zero. Yes, the second derivative. Now, this notation will turn out to be cumbersome. That is DDT. So what we're going to do is we're going to define DDT, this operator, as dot. Okay. That is, we're going to say this is minus I R I L dot. That is, derivative with respect to time is special. Okay, because everything changes with time. That's why you have the dot. Right. So this is VC dot. Yes. So what do you think this is? If one dot is DDT, what do you think is D squared DT squared? Double dot. That's it. Right. So is the not dot notation. You might have seen this as physics. If you haven't, well, this is it. Right. We're going to be using the dot notation extensively from now on. Just remember, dot means derivative with respect to time. Okay. All right. Now, can you look at this expression and this VC dot? And can you tell me if you can write VC dot in terms of IL? I over C, is it positive or negative, the sign? So this is, the negative sign stays, well, the negative sign doesn't change, but VC dot is simply IL over C. Is that clear? Because I, the way I've chosen it, and the way I've chosen the voltage drops, I enters the positive direction voltage drop. Is that clear? Therefore, let me write this nicely. L I L double dot plus R I L dot plus I L over C equals zero. Okay, number two. So let's compare to one. So what's one? Let's call this one. Okay? So what do I have? M X double dot plus D V X dot plus I should where did I use K? Yes, I used K. Plus K X equals zero. Look at this beauty, all right? So it's basically telling you the inductor is like the mass. Assuming current is like your position. Okay? The resistance is like the dampener. That makes sense. Yes. The capacitance is like 1 over the spring constant. Okay. Notice the signs. Now you can't get any more beautiful than this. Right? It's, basically, it's telling you these two equations, I mean, these two systems physically are the same thing. Mathematically. This system stores energy in electromagnetic fields. Okay, magnetic field here, uh, charge separation here. Energy is stored like by the mass, okay, and by how much the spring is either extended or compressed. Okay? It's all very, very intuitive. Right? I mean, it looks deceptively intuitive. You got to practice this, right? Like, it's not good when you go, if you're going to ask you, what the KVL is go like this till here, 
in like 30 seconds, right? No signers, nothing. If you can do that, that means you're prepared for this course. Although we will go over this again, right? It won't be for that long. Because the point is you've seen this before, right? I mean, op amps are going to come in here, right? So I can't keep teaching you. I mean, if I do talk about electric network transfer functions for three weeks, that's not the point of this course. Yeah. So please, if you're uncomfortable with this, oops, not that, with this, practice. Okay, this is fine. I mean, you should know this from physics. If you don't know this, but this you should, no excuse, right? Okay, now let's look at something else. So basically, conclusion is mass spring damper and inductor capacitor resistor. Okay, notice something, okay? Notice I did not write resistor, capacitor, inductor. Because according to our equation, mass is equivalent to inductance, right? Spring is equivalent to capacitance. I mean, not spring. The spring constant, what am I saying? It's wrong, right? The spring constant is equivalent to capacitance. It's equivalent. It's not equal. Because as you can see from these two equations, 1 over C is equal to K. Assuming your IL and X are equivalent. Right? So you got to be very, very careful mathematically when you write even the English language description. Damper is equivalent to resistance. Okay? Or the a damper is equivalent to a resistor. Right? So when you write something like this, it means that you know what you're doing, right? If you write something like mass spring damper is the equivalent mass spring damper and capacitor resistor inductor, that, that's not right, okay? Because mathematically, that English sentence doesn't translate properly. So let's conclude, let's write this out properly. Mass spring damper and inductor capacitor resistor systems, or we'll get into what a system is later, are represented by the same, I'll put same in quotes, okay? The topologically same differential equation, okay? So that's like far reaching implications that ideally what you can do with an uh, inductor capacitor resistor, you should be able to do with a mass uh, spring damper, okay? But ideally, the reason why electrical engineering took off is I can have really high frequencies for inductor capacitor oscillations. Okay, for mass spring systems, it used to be difficult, but now they have come up with micro electromechanical systems, which can oscillate at really high frequencies. Right. So again, we won't we won't only stop at the mass spring damper. This is translational mechanical system. We'll have rotational equivalents, right? Torques. So torque will replace force. So let me ask you this: some of the torques is equal to what? What is the Newton's second law for rotational systems? Do you know? So if force is torque, what is the rotational equivalent of mass? Do you know what it is? Almost. It's moment what? Moment of inertia, I. So some of the torques equals I alpha. Right? It's, well, of course, there's also the dampening stuff if it's there in the system. But now you see they're all equivalent, right? Now, there is one more way to represent this. And we will, uh, so note that, so that's the conclusion for this lecture. Note that there are two other representations, not only one, not two, for the systems above. Laplace, so S domain, this is basically Laplace transforms. and state space, okay? This is basically linear algebra, okay? So bottom line is, I'm gonna conclude this lecture. Today is a short lecture. Well, you have 15 minutes. I might take the entire 15 minutes. I don't know. It depends on you, right? So in red, okay? E3050 will be a disaster for you if 
you don't have sound math skills so let's see how good your math skills are so first of all so no calculator right put it away so without a calculator you're not allowed to calculate on the exam right I'll let you know about cheat sheets. Most likely you don't have cheat sheets either. But uh, for now, let's look at this. So let's look at example one. Okay. So okay, it crashed. Oh, that's right. So example one. This tests a concept. Is that equal to log of A plus log of B? Is that true? Yes or no? Say the yes or no. No. So the statement above is false. Okay, that's good. So you know that. So the sum of the logs is not equal to the log of the sum. Right? But why? So let me ask you this. So conceptually, the statement. Okay, how many of you don't know that if this is true or false? I'm just curious. So all of you know this is false, yes? But then conceptually, why is it false? The statement is false, why? Yes, because log is not a linear function. Okay. But this concept of linear, I'll put it in star, because we here we're talking about functions, okay? But what we're actually dealing with is systems. It's a little tricky, right? But as long as, in other words, what principle is applicable to linear systems? I'm going to use the word system from now. But what principle is it that the response of the sum is equal to some of the resp this, uh, yeah response of the sum is equal to sum of the responses? What principle is that? What's it called? You even learned a circuit analysis technique with this. It's a 2050 circuit analysis. You might, you, hopefully you learned it or you saw it. Superposition, that's right. In other words, the response, in other words, superposition, the principle of superposition, superposition ah, is not applicable. Okay. And this is important because most of the time in this course, we'll be dealing with linear systems. I'll talk about what a system is later, right? It's not it's slightly different from a function, right? All right, so that's so that's good. So now let's do a little bit more tricky. This is math. What is log of four ninths? This is without a calculator. Okay? Don't report your calculator. To the base three halves is what? So this actually tests if you understand what you mean by logarithm. So what's log of four ninths to the base three halves? So if you can't do this, it probably means you don't understand what a logarithm is. You really won't see this directly in this course. But let's say somewhere you run into logs. Okay, that's where you will start struggling. So if you can do this, that probably means you understand what a logarithm is. So what is it? What's log of 4 and 9 to the base 3 halves? Mm, one answer is two thirds. No. So how do you? So let's see. One. So the log of four nines to the base three halves. One answer was it's two thirds. This is incorrect, but that's fine. So let's look at. So Scott said this answer. That's wrong. That's fine. Like in the sense, let's try to figure out what the steps. So how do you come up with this answer, Scott? 
ah that's right so scots so that's good that's actually so an arithmetic error so let's say so the scots method which is correct right that's actually the so question mark let's call it x okay not leave it as a question mark right so this implies four nines is three halves to the x okay right that's it that's the idea of a, what a logarithm is it's the inverse of an exponential function but now so is three halves to the two thirds equals four nines no it's not all right so what is it okay if you start plugging in numbers what if x is zero what do you get on the right hand side one well, that's x can't be zero so don't plug in like seven eighths so like scott this is correct but don't plug in two thirds here because try integers what half is square root right that's not half remember i told you plug in integers yeah No, somebody said it. It's negative two, okay? So x is negative two, because if I have note three halves squared is what nine fourths, yes? But I want four ninths, so negative two. So in other words, one over three halves squared, okay? So again, this is actually I'm very happy that. Scott got till here. Okay, this is the concept. The reason why you're probably struggling with this is because you're used to using calculators. That's why, right? So don't use calculators. Throw it away. Or it takes uh, one of the tricks I play is whenever you get change in the grocery store, you want to be really quick at math. You compute before the person types in the change what change you have to get it and can you get it right. So try that next time you're at a grocery store. Okay. So it says uh, it's a uh, you owe the I don't know clerk seven dollars and sixty one cents, and you give them a ten dollar bill. Okay, so the change should be three dollars and thirty nine cents, I believe, or two dollars and thirty nine cents. Okay, so something like that. So try to do it like really quickly. So basically, I think why you can go from here to here. Is because of the calculator. So don't use, stop using calculators. On the exam, you're not allowed calculators for sure. Right? Okay. So this is a second example, but there are many more like this. So if you're interested, so we're yeah we're running out of time. So if you're interested, stop by my office and I'll give you more. Actually, this problem is the final step. Note example two above is the final step in this problem. In this problem, evaluate log obviously to the base three halves. Oh crap, I forgot this. I'm not sure. Okay, I forgot the exact problem. Um, I think it's online on my YouTube videos. It's something like this, right? It's an infinite. So it's not. This wasn't the hardest step. Okay? This is actually the easiest step. It's something like that. Right? I'm not, I don't. I don't think it's right. But stop by my office, and I'll tell you the exact expression. And if you want to know how to do this, okay. so one of the things you should do, besides like computing change in the grocery store, uh, is every week, if you really want to improve your math, you should pick up pick up like five problems from your differential equations book. I don't know how good your problems in the differential equation book are, or ideally pick up like a couple of Olympiad problems and keep doing them. Right? It'll help you see patterns that are not there. That's why mathematics is helpful. If somebody tells you you can be an engineer without math, that's like the biggest BS there is. You can't. Forget it. Just forget it. Right? 
you need to know math not to the well, ideally to the level like where you can do electromagnetism problems but this is all very simple this course is actually very simple compared to like 3202 for example so anyway all right so next time what we will do is we will start out with laplace transforms so for laplace transform you need to know integration like inside out right and your homeworks are going to start piling up right so start doing your homeworks so start doing the reading you can you should be able to do homework 1 and homework 2 after next lecture but don't wait right start doing them so let's see we have five more minutes or yeah we have four more minutes so next time laplace transforms so laplace transform uh we need integration okay so follow up question let's see how good your integration skills are what's integral indefinite dx over x yes scott's right natural law of x right so you should know like examples like this you know like inside out cuz i will be doing it we will be doing improper integrals we'll start from zero minus go to infinity so we'll integrate in the initial conditions question the constant okay so i assume that's a good point i assume c equals zero right so anyway that's fine so let's see actually that's a good point your in a constant of integration will be very important when we do laplace transforms okay because your initial conditions will be incorporated here okay okay so another thing all right so it's a good thing when i make mistakes it's not if it's when i make mistakes correct me okay it's okay to make mistakes it's not okay to keep making the same mistake over and over again but if you expect your professors to be perfect that's also another like the dumbest thing you can do right so now uh next time like i said we'll start with laplace transforms but uh, one of the point is make sure you know your integration inside out right because i just don't have time to go over integration I don't I can't teach you why this is true right if you don't know why this is true a work on it like do like 300 problems till you get it like integration or drop the class okay. I cannot teach you how to integrate forget it right. if some other professor tells you they can it's bs right it doesn't work because that's the point of this course is not integration the point of this course is dynamic systems and for to do dynamic systems you need to know integration and differentiation So yeah, work on it, and I'll see you next class.